my fellow heroes today we're gonna be looking at the ranger class i think if i had to pick one class and i was stuck with it forever i'm not memeing when i say i would want to probably be the ranger class because they're like jack of all trades master of none I, and that's kind of like that's kind of like me i kind of like picking something and having be able to dip my toes in a little bit of everything and plus they get an animal companion which is super cool and to use swords and bow and arrows and you're like Aragorn and you're like Geralt so and plus you can make a really good ranger class you you can make a really good ranger class so today we're gonna see what you could do uh we're gonna look at some of what is supposedly uh the best ranger multi-class combos in DD. i will judge them uh you know these articles they can be hit or miss sometimes sometimes they're a miss and when they're a miss we just we just show them up we just do we just do something better we make something better um uh your your, your haircut looking fresh as fuck hey appreciate that man appreciate that caitlin did it caitlin cut my hair you know it's the cheapest way to do it and i'm a pretty simple guy when it comes to my haircut i just like a good messy look so i thank you i appreciate the the compliment uh Caitlin did a fantastic job. She was super scared to cut it. And I was like, ah, just do it. Worst case scenario, we just shave it all off. You feeling better? Yes. So it turns out that I probably, I probably had food poisoning. So I got this, like, I went to Walmart and I saw they had like Wagyu beef. I was like, wow, this is the cheapest you could get Wagyu beef. And I, I really want to try some Wagyu beef. And like, this is like affordable for me. So I, so I bought some really cheap Wagyu beef from Walmart let's just say it probably wasn't the best thing to get uh which is why um <laughs> uh, but thank you guys for dealing with the uh, i'm sorry we had some short streams for a little bit there uh but uh, let's get into this let's see what we got here so uh looking at number 10 so i'm gonna we're gonna try my new playlist what happens if i hit play What's it gonna play? Okay, it's just gonna play the last thing that was. Oh, we lost our we lost our thing. It's okay. So starting off, uh Be the Beastmaster Ranger and Totem Barbarian are an animal themed powerhouse. Wow. Beastmaster Ranger. Which is something I'd like to get into. And then Totem Barbarian. I do like Totem Warrior Barbarian. I like Ancestral Barbarian, but then you could you could do a lot. You can go in with your beast and Oh and then they'll have disadvantage on attacking your beast and your beast you can do things like flank with your beast and do a bunch of other stuff. <gasps> that is a good combo. Oh my gosh. Uh, players often ignore the benefits of playing a melee ranger. And the best subclass to do this is the Beastmaster. One of many benefits of being a Beastmaster include having an animal companion who fights with the player on the battlefield. The ranger can order their sidekick to knock an enemy prone with a bonus action, thus the ranger gains advantage on their next melee attack. Yeah, that's one way to do it. That's a good way of, of doing that. Um, it, it saves you... It saves you... It's good coordination, essentially. Uh, especially if you have, like, a like a panther or you have, like, a large uh, cat creature yeah you could definitely order them they have the pounce ability where they can jump on them and uh there's a chance to knock them prone so that that could work and then in taking the bear totem the ranger can minimize the damage they take since rangers are not known for their sturdiness true uh on top of that, the, the power of the barbarians attacks will end a will end a prone enemy take the great weapon master feat one of the best uh, fifth edition ranger feats for the build. Yeah, I agree. I also think like because you could take uh, because you can make it to where like they want to attack you instead. Um, I think that's a fantastic like barbarian build. Uh, yeah, I think I I one hundred percent would love to see that. What and that's number ten. Okay, we'll see what else this goes. Dark Warden Ranger and the Dr Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. Or a thematic pair. Dark, I don't know. What it, oh, Drake Warden. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what a Dark Warden is. Drake Warden and Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. Yeah, that would be sick, uh, actually, because Drake Warden gets to have a dragon as a, as 
as a pet, as a companion, which say less, by the way. And then if you have the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer, you 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 could do some weird stuff. I don't know if I'd want to multi-class the two. I mean, you, you, sorcerers are cool. You get to have your uh, source points, which which can come in handy. Uh, but let's see what this says right here for those uh, for aesthetic pairings. So yeah, if you're just trying to RP and stuff like that, I can imagine it being something like that. Mother of the Dragons by third level, the ranger can summon a Drake companion, uh, which gets resistance based on the player's choice of color. The character also gets resistance from Draconic Bloodline. Also characters levels, uh, so does the Drake. At 15th level, the Ranger can ride the Drake, which is super cool, while in flight, and thanks to its archery prowess and sorcery spells, it can make an aerial assault to make the encounter even more uh, draconic sorcerers. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of flavor, it's a lot of a lot of cool things you can do with it. Uh, draconic transformation spell, one of the uh, many bizarre spells to try even once. Yeah, it, it's a really good, um, like this is saying, aesthetically pleasing one, and there's some really cool things you can do with some sorcerer spells. Uh, for a very thematic approach, um, if, especially if you like to lean that way, which, let me tell you, I do. The Fey Wanderer and the School of Illusion Wizard. I'm already liking this. I'm not familiar with the Fey Wanderer, though. Uh, but I do like the idea of a ranger fighting from range and then casting illusions to distract people only to get, like, maybe some sneak attack uh combos off on it that would be super cool the fey wanderer subclass can manipulate space through spells such as misty step and dimension door super get in and out of situations really quick and people using charm person and mislead thus they are incredibly elusive characters with excellent battlefield control landing hits against the character becomes tougher which I like the idea of that. Uh, you're kind of you're kind of like a dodgy tank. When they multi-class into a school of illusion wizard, they can create duplicates of themselves by tenth level. By tenth level, that's putting ten levels in wizard though. Even at lower levels, the illusion wizard is adept at fabricating distractions that aren't there, which I agree with. The ranger can use these to their benefits, picking off enemies. They investigate the illusion. What I would do, uh, what I would do is I would keep it low level wizard. And then kind of higher level with the the Fey Wanderer subclass, and I would push for kind of that second part that I said before, where you would send out illusions. People would get kind of distracted by the illusions, and then you, you get those you get those surprise rounds for your team really easily. Or uh, you can use illusions uh, for or you can use illusions for so many different other things. Uh, RP wise, uh, whenever you're you're just in the game, you're in a city or something like that, and it just has a lot of agency behind it. On top of being a ranger, which also gets agencies in the wilderness and being able to track people. So I think I think there's a lot that you can do here, giving a ranger the ability to, to cast illusions, stuff like that. I don't, I do not agree so much with like dumping ten levels of wizard mixing mixing that with range right i don't i'm not really comfortable with that idea though gloom stalker ranger and the shadow magic sorcerer a dark duo uh yeah 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 these a lot of these i'm i'm looking <coughs> and they're like they're like yeah let's take the ranger that does this one thing and then let's add another class that does the same thing so far the one i've been the most impressed with is the Beastmaster Totem Barbarian. For me, this is the most like, I guess like more more along the lines of like min-maxing kind of kind of way. These other ones are more for, you kind of, you, you want to use your creative juices to play these other ones. I'm pretty sure you can, you can get the most out of them though, but it's just really scary to multi-class in, uh, in fifth edition. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just like dilly-dally about multi-classing in fifth edition. So just, I, I would keep that in mind for sure. The uh, Gloomstalker has a great dark vision, but the Shadow Magic Sorcerer is even better. Shadow Magic Sorcerers get an extra spell, darkness, and can see through this magical darkness sorcery points. Together, the Gloomstalker Ranger and the Shadow Magic Sorcerer rulers of, light, uh, rulers of the Lightless Spaces. I think this would be really cool, especially if you're playing a Dark Elf. <coughs> if you want to play a Drow, but you don't want to get hurt by the, the light sensitivity or you want to be creative with the light sensitivity, this is some really cool ways because not only are you obscuring and you're creating obstacles on the battlefield and you're making things more dynamic and interactive, but you're also uh, playing towards your race and it can add towards your backstory as well, which I, I think can add to a really good approach. <clears throat> 
Whether the darkness is magical or not, Gloomstalker is virtually invisible to those creatures that rely on dark vision. Gloomstalker lying in wait gets an extra attack and uh, 10 feet of speed at the beginning of each of their first combat turn. That's really cool. That's really cool. I like this one. This one, this this one's gonna be up there with the the Beastmaster. So far, I think number seven and number ten are, are are the best ones when it comes to playing a game and playing in a game and not feeling like you're gonna fall off later on. Uh, I don't know the the details to each class, but I feel like yeah, you could you could definitely get in there and and make something interesting uh, 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 happen with those two and and keep keep it going. The, okay, here we go. Gloomstalker Ranger again and Assassin Rogue. I was literally about to say this. I was literally about to say this. I was like, for up here, I was like, it seems like Gloomstalker would go good with a rogue. It, it, it just seems like a Gloomstalker would fit well if you could have some sneak attack damage on there. <laughs> uh, invisibility, while in the shadows, is an extra boon to the already stealthy rogue. While this may seem geared towards the scout subclass, many of these benefits are redundant. However, players building an Assassin Rogue multi-class will also get the surprise critical hit from assassination features. I think is, I, I agree, I agree. And honestly, you probably don't have to go past that. If we're being honest, you probably don't even have to go past that. You get up to the point where you can get the assassination stuff and then boom, stop leveling up the Rogue and then just keep leveling up Ranger. Uh, best uh, assassin is one of the best subclasses in DD. I agree. This the assassin has been something that I've been wanting to play for a long time. I've been wanting to play assassin rogue for a minute. So uh, I, I mixing it with the the other class that I've also been wanting to play forever would be super cool. And uh, Gloomstalker seems like the way to go. And look at that. They already have a. It looks like that's a drow. It looks like that's a night elf of some sort. Furthermore, the Gloomstalker 15th level uh, shadowy dodge feature is not redundant with the rogue's uncanny dodge. That's good. They're not stacking on top of each other. The sheer number of extra hits a Gloomstalker assassin multi can uh, make its ground to test the combination. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't know what a death monk are. The Gloomstalker Ranger. Is Gloomstalker Ranger just the way to go? Is it just the way to go? Am I? What, what's going on there? Gloomstalker Ranger and the Long Death Monk are a nightmare combo. Okay. I Monks tend to fall off. There are some good monks, but let's see what this has. For those trying to terrify their enemies, the Long Death Monk make a great multi-class with the Ranger built for close combat ambush since both classes focus on surprise attacks and wisdom dexterity. Gloomstalker is one of the uh, Ranger's best builds. Uh, from what I can tell, I can see that. You're putting it with just about every other class. The monks are perfect for close range fighting. At third level, Long Death Monk gets healing boons. At sixth level, they can frighten their enemies, allowing for opportunity attacks. Interesting. On top of the Gloomstalker. Yeah, at the surprise damage with the Gloomstalker gets, and the players may down their enemies in one turn. It's a little, little bit of min maxing, a little bit of a certain type of play style. This is, this one can kind of like, can kind of tunnel vision. I like a little bit more openness whenever I play, but I can see how this one could be, um, could be fun, could be a good time, uh, just by jumping in there and 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 trying to be a, you know, trying to be like a terrifying presence on the battlefield and really controlling how the NPCs uh, do because there's not, I, what, what, what is fear? Like a wisdom saving throw? Um, there's not a lot of creatures that are that great on wisdom. So you could, you could definitely make it work. The monster slayer ranger and blood hunter combo could give Van Helsing a run for his money. Monster slayer ranger. Okay. I've seen that one. Blood hunter, blood hunter. See, This one's interesting because this one, what, Matt Mercer made this class? You would have to ask your DM if they're okay with allowing the Blood Hunter. Uh, I like how they say Van Helsing. The Blood Hunter is essentially, what, Geralt of Rivia, but the Ranger class is Geralt of Rivia, so not all considered Blood Hunter a canonical class, as I was saying. As Matt Mercer, again, the critical uh, is unofficial option. However, a uh, close relationship with Wizards of the Coast is enough to class. And I trust Matt Mercer enough to make something fun and powerful and balanced, considering how closely he plays to the rules. 
The Blood Hunter's features, Hunter's Bane, helps the Monster Slayer tracks Bay, Fiends, and Undead. Meanwhile, the Ranger's Hunter Sense helps them find targets' weak points. Furthermore, Slayer's Prey steal extra damage and designated enemies. Cool. Cool enough. The Horizon Walker Ranger and Blade Singer Wizard combo. Blade Singer Wizard. Okay, let's see. Let's see. We got some close range and long range mixing them together. <clears throat> is is uh, the Horizon Walker Ranger is terrifying for its ability to maneuver the battlefield and even other planes? Yeah, because you oh, well, teleportation abilities. You're like a uh, you're like uh, the final F Final Fantasy 15 main protagonist. I forgot his name. I can't remember his name. <laughs> well, it shares some things in common with the Fey Wanderer. So it's just teleportation spell, Misty Step. It has more in common with wizards. All right, so we're going to stack it on top of there. Blade Singers are adept at close combat fighting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can boost the ranger's dexterity combined with the Ryzen Walker's planar warrior feature and the damage dealt is formidable. Furthermore, the Blade Singer spells casting plus the Ryzen. I like this one. I like this one because it gives you that. I love having like a sword and a shield. And what I mean by that, I love having good offense. I love having a sword so I can go in there, do some good offense, but then I have a shield. Maybe my shield can be counterattacks. Maybe my shield is being the ability to retreat. Maybe it's a... This seems like it gives you a little bit of both. My favorite thing of all time to do is sword and shield. So, uh, having that capability of, of teleportation being the shield, and then you have your close range combat being your sword, I feel like this is one that would work. When you're multi-classing with wizard, you really can't go too wrong because you have a, a flurry of spells they can do it's going to be depending on how your game is run those spells can add up and be kind of really expensive but uh yeah horizon walker ranger they're pretty mobile i'm worried this is what i'm worried about this class though <clears throat> i like where when damp da it seems like this class damage would fall off and look it even says it right here wizards are one of the strongest combat classes of long ranges so like what I'm worried is you're essentially going to be taking a little bit of ranger and then a lot of wizard. And you're really taking that ranger class so that you can have some free teleportation abilities and then just be able to blast people with spells. I wouldn't try to keep these two even, right? I would get the most that you can get out of one and then take advantage of the abilities from the other one. The Hunter Ranger and the Battle Master Fighter. See, this, I love this because of its simplicity and how much it actually works. Um, the hunt, I mean, the Battle Master Fighter, I, this is just me, maybe call, maybe, I feel like we could go a little lower. I feel like we can make it a little simpler. I say just go Champion Fighter. You, you get, you get three attacks. And then you can get crits, and you're using range weapons? I mean, say less. Uh, the Hunter Ranger and the Battlemaster are a down-to-earth duo. I agree, it's very down-to-earth, very close. The Hunter is a stereotypical Ranger aesthetic, but that doesn't mean it is a pass. The Hunter uh, can take Colossus Slayer, yep, to deal extra damage, Giant Killer uh, to make more attacks against enemies that miss, or Horde Breaker, right, right. You know, if I'm not taking Beastmaster, I'm taking... I'm taking Hunter, uh, and then I'm taking Sharpshooter, and then I'm taking... Is Sharpshooter... Sharpshooter is the one where you take minus five and ten, right? Yeah, that's Sharpshooter. <clears throat> Since both Horde, Breaker, and Giant Killer require the enemy to be in melee range... Oh, do they? I never knew that. A distance fighter build is not optimal. However, multi-classing battle master fighter can help the ranger make most of their features. Ah! The various maneuvers. I still say go champion. Yeah, I mean, the maneuvers are cool. But, like, if you're looking for simplicity, go champion and just... Boom, boom, boom. You do one thing. You shoot people, and that's it. You shoot people, and you're good at it. You're, uh, uh, that's that's it. <laughs> like, sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is just more. The Swarm Keeper Ranger and the Circle of Spores Druid deal damage over time. Ooh, I'm 
story, like in the concept of someone, it's like it's like it's like a Pokemon toxic stall, D, you know, AOE, one of the best Druid multi-class combinations in D and D, really now. Okay, is the Ranger the Swarm Keeper Ranger is optimal subclass for players who like more long-lasting abilities? The Swarm can add extra damage, move the character, or move an enemy into areas of effect. I like this. This is this is like good against like bosses and stuff like that. The Circle Spore Druid is handy for creating those areas of effect. The Spreading Spores feature in many Druid spells can simultaneously reach many targets. In addition, features like the Halo of Spores deal extra damage along the Swarm. Uh, meaning enemies close by. I don't have a lot of experience with um, the either of these classes. I we did. If you you can go check out my video. I'll put it up here. Uh, that the uh, we did a, a, a PVP, you know, uh, multi-classing, and I randomly made like a, a druid multi-class, and uh, it had like spore abilities, and it was it, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun to do that. But uh, other than that. This seems like fun. This seems viable, if I'm being honest. Now, Druid is one of the hardest classes to play in the game. And you're also having Ranger, which in my opinion, anytime a class gives you a lot of different things to do, the more options you have, the harder it is to play the class, in my opinion, because you, you're, you're essentially, it's like playing blue in Magic, right? You're essentially, having to choose what to send back to someone's hand having to choose what to counter spell you are you you have to pick and choose spells that may work in every situation or pick and choose spells that work in specific situations and just be have be very knowledgeable about the game so as cool as this last class may seem i think it is best uh used for for probably more experienced players but for not experienced players definitely go with number two definitely go with the simplicity you'll love the multi-class and it'll go super hard i still say go champion with it to get those crits you'll just be a freaking machine gun deleting people over and over and over again but sweet yeah i think this was a good list i think this was a good list i i think uh, i the only thing i added to it was champion uh the tops i think number one number two number six uh maybe number seven number six for sure and number 10 are going to be the most viable when it comes to like lasting not falling off late game so if you're in a long campaign if you're just going to level 10 i wouldn't recommend any of these i'd probably if you're just going to level like you're playing a you're playing a pre-made game you're playing a pre-built game like a Curse of Strahd or um, Storm King, uh, I would just do like number 10, uh, number six. So I would do the Gloomstalker Ranger, Assassin's Rogue, and uh, uh, Totem Barbarian and Beastmaster. And I would do uh, number two, Hunter Ranger, Battlemaster Fighter, and or Champion Fighter. If you're just going to like level 10, uh, if your DM allows it, I'm pretty sure the Blood Hunter combo is just really good. Uh, you can kind of get away with that uh, at, at any levels. Uh, just be careful when you're multi-classing up to level 10. It's gonna it's gonna hurt. I would get one class to level five, uh, especially if you're starting with Ranger, so that way you can um, have extra attack. And when you're leveling the other class, you're still feeling viable as you're going from level one to five again or level one to three four whatever it may be but yeah those are the, those are my uh these are some of the best rangers multi-class and got my opinion on them and tips on on how to do it and how to how to get away with it in your own homebrew game tell me your thoughts and uh what what you might multi-class in the comics below go check out uh my youtube and if you're watching this on youtube go check out my twitch i'm gonna change my schedule but uh, it's going to be, this is the schedule It's going to be, uh, Saturday, Sundays and, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays. We're going to be live on Twitch. Uh, so we, we do just chatting and we, we play video games, competitive games and stuff like that. But I love talking to everybody about D and D. So yeah, check it out.